Continuing on page 156, chapter 25, ATI, regarding hemothorax, pneumothorax, in ATI, and flail chest. Medications could include benzodiazepines, which are sedatives, lorazepam or midazolam, dazolam, can be used to decrease anxiety. Nursing actions would include monitor vital signs, Benzodiazepines can cause hypotension and respiratory distress. Remember that the medications have an amnesiac effect. Monitor for paradoxical effects such as euphoria or rage. Client education would be to have the medications that have amnesiac effects and let them know that this can cause drowsiness. For opioid agonists, these are pain medications. This would include morphine sulfate and fentanyl, which are opioid agents used to treat moderate to severe pain. These medications act on the mu and kappa receptors that help alleviate pain. Activation of these receptors produces an analgesia pain relief effect. They can cause respiratory depression, euphoria, sedation, and decrease in GI motility. If the client is receiving mechanical ventilation, the nursing actions and client education can vary. Nursing actions are to be cautiously used with clients who have asthma or emphysema due to this risk of the respiratory depression with these opioid agonists. Assess pain every four hours. Monitor clients, especially older adults, for manifestations of respiratory distress. If respirations are 12 per minute or less, stop the medication and notify the prov provider immediately. Monitor vital signs for hypotension and bradypania. So decrease breath, respirations, assess for nausea and vomiting, assess level of sedation, drowsiness, level of consciousness, monitor for constipation, encourage fluid intake and activity related to a decrease in gastric motility, monitor INO, report fluid retention as an adverse effect of opioid medications. Client education would be letting them know if receiving a fentanyl patch that the initial patch takes several hours to take effect. A short-acting pain medication is administered for breakthrough pain. If there are no fluid restrictions due to other conditions, drink plenty of fluids to prevent constipation. Follow instructions on how to use PCA, which is patient-controlled analgesia PCA pump, if applicable. The client is only person, the client is the only person who can push this medication administration button. The safety lockout mechanism on the PCA prevents the client from using too much medication. Interpersonal care. Respiratory services should be consulted for ABGs, breathing treatments, and suctioning for airway management. Pulmonary services can be consulted for chest tube management and pulmonary care. Pain management services can be consulted if pain persists or it is uncontrolled. Rehab care can be consulted if the client has prolonged weakness and needs assistance with an increased level of activity. For therapeutic procedures, there could be chest tube insertion, which chest tubes are inserted in the pleural space to drain fluid, blood, or air to reestablish a negative pressure and to facilitate lung expansion, and to restore normal intrapleural pressure. Nursing actions are to obtain an informed consent, gather supplies, monitor the client's status, such as vital signs, SAO2, and chest tube drainage. Report abnormalities to the provider and administer pain medications. Continually monitor vital signs and the client's response to the procedure. Monitor chest tube placement, function of chest drainage system, and dressing. Client education would be to tell them to deep breathe to promote lung expansion, take rest periods as needed, use proper hand hygiene to prevent infection, participate in coughing, deep breathing, and the use of an incentive spirometry. Obtain immunizations for influenza and pneumonia. Recovery from a pneumothorax or hemothorax can be lengthy. Talk with the family or other support people to express feelings about the conditions and recovery. If applicable, consider smoking cessation. Follow up with the provider as instructed and report the following to the provider. Upper respiratory infection, fever, cough, difficulty breathing, or a sharp chest pain. Complications can include decreased cardiac output, 
which is the amount of blood pumped by the heart, which decreases as intrathoracic pressure rises. Hypotension thus develops. Nursing actions are to administer IV fluids and blood products as prescribed to help with the cardiac output. Monitor heart rate and rhythm and monitor intake and output and the chest tube drainage. Respiratory failure is another complication that can occur, which is inadequate gas exchange due to the lung collapse. Nursing actions would be to prepare for mechanical ventilation and to continue respiratory assessment. Flail chest, which is a result of the free floating rib segments. The lung below the flail segment caves in on inhalation and balloons out on exhalation. The portion of the lung below the flail segment cannot participate in gas exchange, so oxygenation is compromised. This is flail chest. Assessment would be to look at the risk factors. Risk factors are multiple rib fractures from blunt chest trauma, often caused by motor vehicle crash or as a result of cardiopulmonary resuscitation on older adults. Expected findings would be unequal chest expansion, the unaffected side of the chest will expand while the affected side can appear to diminish in size or remain stationary. Paradoxical chest wall movement, inward movement of segment during inspiration, outward movement of segment during expiration. Other expected findings of this flail chest would be tachycardia, hypotension, dyspnea, cyanosis, anxiety, and chest pain. Patient-centered care. Nursing care would be to administer humidified oxygen, monitor vital signs and SAO2, review finding of pulmonary function tests, periodic chest x-rays and ABGs, assess lung sounds, color, and capillary refill, promote lung expansion by encouraging deep breathing and proper positioning, maintain mechanical ventilation in the event of severe injury to establish adequate gas exchange and stabilize the injury, Flail chest is usually stabilized by positive pressure ventilation. Suction the trachea and endotracheal tube as needed. Administer pain medications. PCA or an epidural block commonly is used. Administer IV fluids as prescribed. Monitor intake and output. Offer support and reassurance by explaining all procedures. Continue on with the application exercises to complete Chapter 25 in ATI.